Operation Choke Point was an initiative right, by the United States Department of Justice in 2013 under the Obama administration. And basically what they're trying to do is they were trying to investigate banks, right? investigate banks that did business with uh, freedom dealers, payday lenders, and any companies that seemed that they believed to be high risk for fraud and money laundering. This is key word here, because what do we hear a lot about in the crypto space right now? Right. The negative is fraud and money laundering yep. and what have we seen we saw signature bank t- get taken down right whether they were doing illegal things or not i don't know i can't confirm that somebody else might know somebody else might say something but i don't know that so i can't say that um but the narrative around bitcoin and cryptocurrencies has been fraud and money laundering for a long time oh, yeah. and now with these banks being shut down i think they're setting up the choke point once again to make sure that on ramping and off ramping becomes even more difficult. And we've talked about this before in the past, but now we're seeing it happen live, right, with the banks. And I think they're going to keep moving in that direction with any any crypto bank. We already know that lots of banks in general, uh, if you try setting up any type of bank business account with them and you're crypto related, they either shut you down or they you know just don't even let you apply or you're gonna have some type of runaround issue with them let, all let the me, time. Yeah, let me let me actually touch on that because you said it. That's a great point, Crusader. You should you you should know that crypto is a problem for the legacy financial situations. When so when Crusader and I got together to set up our banking. I went into the to, to the institution where we started our, our banking and I started to tell them, hey, we need to set up an, just normal stuff, right? We're setting up a business account. We've got this, that, the third, whatever the case may be, right? And the, when the woman asked what we did, I said, well, it's in, in cryptocurrency. And all of a sudden, the look on her face was like, and I was like, what? And she was like, well, what exactly do you guys do in crypto? And I asked her, I said, candidly, does it matter? We are ultimately, we're, we're in the crypto space, but we're not trying to bring, we're not trying to take crypto in and out of your accounts. Well, sir, to be honest with you, it does matter. And that is a freaking problem. There is no reason why. So ultimately, we ended up telling her what we do on here, right? We entertain and we try to educate, okay? So we put in crypto education and they were okay with that. But she told me very plainly and candidly, do not have a bunch of crypto transactions coming in and out of this account. And I, I, I did. I was frustrated with it. I was like, why? If ultimately these are doxed transactions, they're going through, let's just say you run it through somebody that they're OK with, i.e. maybe Coinbase or whoever. What does it matter? Well, it matters because they view it as a threat. They view this as something that's going to take away from their chokehold on the financial institution or on the the financial world that we are living in right now. And the moment somebody threatens you, you do what? You back up, you get in a little bit of a corner, and now you've got to claw your way out. And that's effectively what it felt like they were doing when we set up that account. Yeah, dude, exactly right. So back to the choke point situation, uh, that being a problem, we've also seen the stable coins, right? Depegging, a lot of people not understanding what's happening with these stable coins. Are they going to be, are, is this all part of the plan, right? The whole theory, is this part of the plan for CBDCs to be kicked in, for government to take over these uh, stable coins? Well, the whole stable coin war scenario is happening. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah. Um, then leads us to CZ coming out and saying, well, I'm getting rid of the uh, BUSD getting out of the stablecoin game and putting it back into Bitcoin, Ethereum, and BNB. Um, so that leads us to the point where I think this guy or, you know, they might know ahead of time that, hey, on ramping and off ramping, right? Right now, we this last cycle, we've had it very easy where we can just sit on stablecoins. In 2018, 2019, stablecoins were barely a thing. USDT had just been around. Nobody was confident in stablecoins. Now yeah. we've got all kinds of stablecoins coins. The entire alphabet has stable coins, right? <laughs> yeah. So everybody's just sitting on stable coins. It's all good. But with that possibly going away or getting a lot riskier with different things coming up, we're going to have to start back. So we're going to have to start sitting back into the actual asset so that you're either in crypto or you're not. Yeah. And, you know, this all goes back to the on ramping and off ramping, what they deem as fraudulent or high risk can definitely become a target. And if, you know, we're headed towards these economical problems that we've been facing already, crypto is going to continuously be deemed high risk and fraudulent. Mm -hmm. And they're going to probably put more, you know, 
whatever you want to call it around it. So I think Operation Choke Point 2.0, I think uh, Crypto Mason said that actually, 2.0, shout out to him, uh, that that's what's going on. So we got to be very careful with that. Keep eyes on what is happening in the financial system, in the traditional financial system, because it is leaking into the crypto space. Well, and you know what? More than more than just leaking, it's a full out feels like kind of an attack. And I thought I thought about it at first and I was like, why would they come after stable coins? Right. People are just putting money there, allowing it to, you know, sit. It, it's stable. It's it's it gives you stability. I was like, why would they care about that? Then I realized, wait a minute that has them effectively not using the US dollar and the moment that people in mass in mass decide or realize that they don't need to actually use the dollar and they still have some because here's the thing most people when they get into crypto if you ask somebody that's not in crypto why are you not in crypto one of the first things they're going to tell you is it's risky right and it is it is absolutely okay but if you said, well, I mean, are you not at least in stable coins? And, well, what's a stable coin? Well, I mean, it's pegged to the price of a dollar. It stays at a dollar. And they're like, oh, and what would be some other reasons that I could? And you start rattling through some benefits of using a stable coin that is not centrally controlled by our government. Enough people in mass start to figure that out. That's why it's the problem. And then you add to it, oh, I can earn interest on something that is also stable. What are we turning into? We're turning into whoop banking right and that is effectively what they do not the want fraction, they already the, don't yeah, have fractional reserves right yes exactly and they already don't have the money to cover we're seeing that silicon valley bank i might get this number wrong but i think it was they had they didn't have 97 per, they had 97 percent of all of their 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 uh cash that had come in output to work there was nothing in the freaking bank dude like well that, Dude, that's thanks to what happened with the fog around the I world. Know. They dropped the fractional to reserves nothing. to practically zero. To practically right? zero. Yeah. But and what? and on top of that, you, they they just they know there's no ever never any consequences. And the executives yes. on Friday before they everything came out, they all took massive bonuses. They all paid yeah. out their own bonuses. Said, hey, which is, whatever which is we got, disgusting. whatever cash we got, grab it and run. Yeah. It's disgusting. Uh, the people are always the last, you know, the people, we, the people always take the hit, but we, the people don't get to make decisions on what's happening on a larger scale. Yeah. We just kind of get pushed around. I got so. one more thing to say about stable yeah. coins that was, yeah, uh, that we're sure. talking about it. I was in a, sp I was in a TikTok live yesterday with Joshua Jake and Dark Horse and all these other guys. Yeah. And Dark Horse brought up a good point, which is USDC had 3.3 billion tied up in svb right mm -hmm. yep. and when that came out right that's where the dpeg started and it depegged at different price points on different exchanges mm -hmm. like on one exchange it dropped i think down to like 12 cents 12 oh there's a like, flash crash somewhere on yeah USDC. On, on one of them i forgot yeah, which one okay. it was down yeah. to 12 cents uh -huh. but the, the grand majority was like around 80 something 88 cents 90 something cents yeah um so there was a bunch of arbitrage opportunities but then on Monday, expecting us, we were expecting it to get worse, right? They haven't received the money back. They haven't gotten the $3.3 billion back at all. So why is it that USDC was able to repeg on Monday? 